Hello, Jason Frett saying welcome to this edition of Cinema LA, brought to you by TV5 Mond and Trip Tank, a new comedy on Comedy Central. We are dedicating this episode of our show entirely to the 2014 Louisiana International Film Festival in Baton Rouge, May 8th through the 11th at Cinemark in Perkins Row. This is the second annual festival, and last year was a big success. Over 60 films, lots of volunteers, lots of people viewing, and it was all in part to the people here in this community and our executive director, Chesley Helmsfield. Let's take a look at a feature at the 2013 Louisiana International Film Festival. And action. This is awesome. I'm from a big city, Phoenix, Arizona, so I'm used to seeing things like this going on in events and film festivals. So it's really neat that you guys are having this here. I, I love the idea. I love it. There are festivals that have been around for 15, 20 years that don't have the caliber of films that the Louisiana International Film Festival is showing. I mean, that's a fact. What an incredible honor it is to be a part of the, the inaugural year for this festival. The festival programmers and the staff have really done such an amazing job of programming a very strong festival. We're now consuming movies in a solitary fashion. We're watching them on the iPad or on our phones or at home and TV. It's wonderful to uh, be part of a communal movie-going experience and really share something with, with other people all around you. They really bent over backwards to make us feel comfortable here and, and honored and to make us feel as though what we did was worth making. Two minutes till show time, everybody, two minutes. This is a destination film festival, and we were very successful this year in completely nailing that theme. Um, and any of the people who came to the festival this year had such incredible glowing things to say about not only the, the architecture, the music, the culture, the history of Louisiana, but also the people. This year, in our very first year, we made an imprint of a cumulative amount of 4,000 people. We wanted to make sure we engaged the, the population here in Louisiana Louisiana and kind of brought to their attention and interest what we're doing in terms of being able to show films before they come out in the general public. One of our co-artistic directors, Dan Ireland, founded the Seattle International Film Festival 30 years ago and it's actually a month-long uh, festival that has over 30,000 people attend. And right now we've made such a great impact with our local audience, our Louisiana audience, that now we have the incredible support and momentum to be able to build this festival to be like a international film festival with a distribution market, a co-production market, um, to be able to have some type of seed funding for um, upstart filmmakers, things that kind of the tentacles that develop over time with a successful film festival. So if you're a filmmaker who's always been curious about what the state of Louisiana has to provide to you, you want to come and see all the opportunities that we have in 2014 at the Louisiana International Film Festival. That will give you a great chance to be able to explore all these great locations that we have in the state, meet with people one-on-one -on -one who can actually be a part of your crew, and ask questions to people about the tax incentives and how to get involved. We're going to step away for just a moment. When we come back, we're going to look at Lyft's mentorship program and take a trip out to Seattle. Stay with us on Cinema LA. Welcome back to the special festival edition of Cinema LA here in Hollywood South. You know, you've heard it by now, Louisiana is now the number one production destination in the film industry. But what we need is a workforce that is prepared in all the crafts associated behind the camera here in our production center. So the mentorship program by the Louisiana International Film Festival is working on that. Let's take a look at this feature with Shanna Forstall on how that's getting done. This program is such a gift and it was, um, it was funded by J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, but it was also put together by the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. The Lift Mentorship Program is a program that's been designed to help equip and train people, young people especially, but also people looking for a, you know, a second career or just a different career, to train and equip them and to put them into the film industry in Louisiana. We found that there was a gap between what was happening in the industry and the training and knowledge and background to get people into that, those places. And so we came up with this training program. The first one is going to be during the LIF uh, annual festival. 
We start the morning with basic workshops that cover different, different aspects about the industry. They get to meet key people who are operating in those different areas. Then uh, we move into panels and we have everything from a talent panel to a crew position panel to a filmmakers panel to a women in film panel. Um, and they'll get to hear from groups of people about specific areas of film. And then we, in the afternoon we have tribute sessions where we have special guests coming in to speak. That's going to be really exciting. Um, we'll have them attend screenings and then have private Q&As with the filmmakers after. It's going to be a variety of learning types. We want to make sure that everybody has a chance to come in to learn the way that they learn, to get direct interaction with people who are actually doing this, and then to take away whatever it is that they need to take away. And hopefully, you know, these are people participating in the program who already have an interest, but what we want to do is facilitate a passion. We want them to connect strongly to something and figure out what it is that they want to do, or at least get on the path to finding that. So the best way to find out more about the mentorship program is to follow us on Facebook, because that's where we can put live information really quickly. We're going to be talking about who our speakers are, who our special guests are. Now, some of those are going to be surprises, but the ones we can talk about, uh, uh, we'll be putting that information on Facebook. We'll be posting the online registration site. All of that will be on the Facebook page. So all you need to do is search Louisiana International Film Festival Mentorship Program because there's a page for the festival itself and there's a page for the mentorship program. So that's a really good way to follow what's happening, to get news alerts, and, um, and to just continue to be part of what's, what's going on because this is the first of many programs. We have lots of programs coming up, especially in the summer. Um, also, I want to give out our email address. It's mentorship at lifilmfest.org. That's mentorship at lifilmfest.org. You can email us at any time for information about the program. And we are creating a contact database. If you say, you know what, I want to be on the list that whatever you guys are promoting, whatever program's coming up, I want to know about it, we're creating a list for that. And we can add you to that list and make sure that you're on top of everything that's coming out because it's going to be exciting. Um, and then the other thing is we do have an office number. Our number is 504-267-0451. And that's a general number that anyone can call, whether you know, you're an individual who's interested or you may have a child who's interested or, or whatever. You can contact us at 504-267-0451 and ask your questions, get put on the list, whatever it is that you need, we're available. As I've mentioned before, the goal of the Louisiana International Film Festival is to become a world-class destination. How do you do that? Well, one of the folks that are involved with our festival is Dan Ireland. Him and a partner 25 years ago started the Seattle Film Festival. It's a model we're following, and we recently caught up with Dan. Here's a feature on his story. It's pretty obvious right now that Louisiana is here to stay as a filmmaking state. Louisiana is exotic. People want to come here. I mean, people here love film. The reaction to what we all put together for last year was proof positive that they love to be challenged, they love to be provoked, they're daring, they're adventurous. And I could see that it was, it reminded me so much of what I did back in Seattle with Daryl. We struggled the first year because we had to establish ourselves. I mean, and it was our first time up at bat, but we had such great support from the press and, and also from the community at large. And it got to the point where people were taking their vacations during the whole two and a half weeks. Year three, we went three and a half weeks. They live, breathe, eat film for that period of time. And now we have IMAX, we have stadium seating. And you know what? I couldn't think of a better place in Baton Rouge to put on our festival other than the Cinemark Perkins Row. It's a great place to see a film.
lofty goals, but I know that we can achieve it here in Louisiana. Why not us? We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to look at the films playing at this year's festival and also talk to someone receiving a very special award. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us on Cinema LA, brought to you by TV5 Mond and Trip Tank, the comedy on Comedy Central. You know, when you host an international film festival, you're inviting people from around the world, and these filmmakers and industry people will be coming to our city. How do you make sure the Southern hospitality gets to them? You have film liaisons to make sure their stay is pleasant. Local actor Jensie Hogan hosts this piece. You may recognize her. She was recently in the Dallas Buyers Club. Take a look. We are here to celebrate the Louisiana International Film Festival by training the uh, filmmaker liaisons. They all have volunteered their time and energy. They're all either actors or makeup artists or directors, producers, people that want to be involved in the festival on a deeper level. They're going to take care of the directors that come from out of town. We want it to be a more intimate thing where we, we really offer that southern charm. They also are the liaisons to the community. So this year we're trying to educate the community about a film festival and they don't a lot of times we don't know if they know how to go see movies or if they know how to buy tickets and all this stuff so these filmmaker liaisons will tell all their friends all their industry friends about how to buy tickets how to get involved how to volunteer it's a very quick way to get the information out to the public the filmmaker liaisons are my heroes and of course the film festival is all about films and workshops now let's take a look at the 2014 schedule here for the louisiana international film festival as mentioned, the festival begins on Thursday, May 8th. There's an opening reception, and, and then the true and powerful mixed race story, a period piece called Bell. And of course, a nice after party to get things started. Then on Friday the 9th, here we go. Music video spotlight, Freedom Summer, Anita, We Won't Bow Down, which is a great story of a secret society of African Americans in inner city New Orleans. Then tasting menu, Cannibal, a sneak peek of a big Hollywood film that will be a surprise. And in a thousand times good night, it is a photojournalist story and very powerful. Then Queens and Cowboys, a straight year in the gay rodeo. And God's Pocket, the final movie for Philip Seymour Hoffman. Followed by Unforgiven, The Dog, and App. Very unique concept. We start on Saturday the 10th in the morning with Ernest and Celestine. And then, of course, LA 308, directed by yours truly on the Louisiana coast. And then another film about Louisiana, The Great Flood from 1927. Le Chef, Particle Fever, then Siddharth. Then a special treat, Comedy Central is here with a premiere episode of Trip Tank. Now, this is a show that will accept materials from people not in the business, just like you. The Kill Team, Child's Post, Chinese Puzzle, Who is Diane Crystal, Felony, and then The Devil's Violinist, starring David Garrett. He's already a world-class musician, and this is his acting debut. Followed by Coherence, Cavalry, Buzzard, Gore Vidal, The United States of Amnesia, Venus and Fur, The Double, and Just a Sigh. Then we move to Mother's Day on Sunday the 11th, The Auction. Then there's Una Vida, A Fable of Music in the Mind. This is a New Orleans story of someone going through dementia but still remembers music. Ida, The Devil's Violinist Repeats, Queens and Cowboys Repeats, Then The Life and Times of Doris Payne, A Tribute to Karen Black, Siddharth Repeats, and then From New Orleans, Bayou Maharaja, The Tragic Genius of James Booker. This is an award-winning film by director Lily Kieber, who has been on our program. Then Kidnap for Christ, The Famous Five Easy Pieces, another showing of We Won't Bow Down, another showing of Freedom Summer, and then we close out with the wonderful romantic comedy featuring two of the greatest actors in the world, Christopher Plummer and Shirley MacLaine. On Mother's Day, a perfect way in that evening to spend with your mother on a fabulous movie exclusive for us at this festival. And of course, Miss Lovely, Unforgiving, Tasting Menu, and The Double will have second showings for those who did not see them. In addition to the great slate of films, there are mentorship programs to learn about being in the film trade, there will be a talent search where you can get discovered, and of course, lots and lots of parties. To find out everything, go to lifilmfest.org. That is lifilmfest.org.
That is a great lineup. I hope you will see some of these great films. I was very fortunate a few years ago to work on a film called LA 308, shot on the coast here in Louisiana, and got to work with Jerry Leggio. He has been in over 50 movies in Louisiana and helped form the Louisiana Film Commission. Let's take a look at a little of Jerry's work. In 1960, a film came to Louisiana and I did a little research and found that that was like the 29th major film that had been made in the state since the turn of the century. And I thought that was pretty generous of the industry to bring that many films into the state. And then I realized it wasn't so generous after all, considering what we're getting now. Jerry Leggio has been called Baton Rouge's leading, leading man for his 50 plus roles in community theater. But he also has been in many movies, beginning in 1964 with Betty Davis in Hush Hush, Sweet Charlotte. In addition to acting, Jerry did studies and helped form the Louisiana Film Commission. He is an unselfish person who dedicated himself not only to acting, but also to growing the film industry in Louisiana. Several years ago, he had a prominent role in the local film LA 308, where he played an educated Cajun. The character was fun to do because he was such a good person. And, uh, and usually it's more fun to do villains. In fact, I, on films, I'm usually cast as a heavy or uh, an authority figure. Yeah, I learn a lot from actors that I work with, and I found myself whenever I would you know, um, read next to Jerry, I just taking notes. We've all taken a, a step back and was just like blown away by some of the performance that he's done in this movie. And I killed a man. Several men. In the line of duty? It was my orders. When I was in Korea, we attacked the village. All our firepower. After the smoke cleared, we found that a family had stayed behind with the soldiers. They were all dead. And I had a hand in it. I fell on my knees crying. I begged the Lord for forgiveness, just like I do every day. It doesn't go away. But forgiveness can prevent the past from dominating the future. That's why it's right in the middle of the Lord's Prayer. We had a very small boat, and so we rehearsed these scenes on a trailer in a parking lot, because I wasn't going to be able to be out there with him. It was just going to be Andre and the two actors. I learned to fly cast, because he wanted my character to do some fly casting. Andre, who was our cinematographer, would be, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 yards away, and he wanted me to cast that fly for it, flop right in front of the camera. Took a few tries, but I finally mastered it. And I think we got the exact right shot. Jerry is very talented. I feel very fortunate to have worked with him. I'm very pleased to announce that The Advocate has partnered with Liv to come up with the Ann Price Lifetime Achievement Award, and it will be awarded to Jerry during the festival. Ann Price, as you may remember, was a champion of the arts. She was a journalist for The Advocate for over 70 years, and she recently died at the age of 91. You can see this award being given at the playing of LA 308 during the film festival. That'll be May 10th at 11 a.m., and of course at Cinemark in Perkins Row. We're gonna be right back to wrap things up on Cinema LA. Stay with us. back on Cinema LA. I want to close our show today by encouraging you to please go out and see these films and support the arts in our community. The website for the festival is lifilmfest.org. lifilmfest.org. You can get a pass to see over 40 films for $100 on that site. Individual tickets are $10 per film and you can go to the Cinemark Perkins Row website to get those tickets. It is going to be a great time. The 2014 Louisiana International Film Festival, May 8th through the 11th. We will see you there. And we'll see you next time on Cinema LA here on Cox 4.